In this video, we talk about mean squared errors and then also R squared and adjusted R squared, where R squared, remember, is the coefficient of determination. Okay, so first thing, mean squared error is our estimator for sigma squared, which is the variance of our epsilons. So the way that we can calculate mean squared error, first let's start by taking all of the residuals. We'll take the residual, square it, and add all those up. And then we divide by our degrees of freedom, n minus k minus 1. Remember where k plus 1 is the number of uh, predictors. It's the number of um, betas. We have beta 0 through beta k. And then n is our sample size. So this is our mean squared error, s squared. Okay, so that's our mean squared error. And then we can define our residual standard deviation. And our residual standard deviation is denoted S and it's simply the positive of the square root of S squared. So this is the residual standard deviation and it's the size of a typical error. So gives you an idea of how big a typical epsilon would be. So we can see that the calculation for mean squared error is almost the same as what we saw for simple linear regression. So in simple linear regression, we saw some looked exactly the same, yi minus yi hat squared. But for simple linear regression, we just had n minus 2. And actually, this is just a special case So in simple linear regression, beta was just equal to beta naught and beta one. So K, in other words, was equal to two. So when we look at N minus two, or rather K is equal to one. Um, and so then if we look at N minus K minus one, we have N minus one minus one which is the same thing as n minus two. So um, simple linear regression is just a special case of multiple linear regression. So really, if you're going to um, try to memorize any particular calculation for mean squared error, you might as well memorize the more general one, which is just n minus k minus one in the denominator. Okay, so that's our mean squared error. Next thing let's talk about is r squared, our coefficient of determination. So we know that r squared is equal to the regression sum of squares divided by our total sum of squares. Because we know that r squared is the proportion of variability in the response that is explained by the response's linear relationship with the predictor. So up in our numerator is our regression sum of squares. Down in the denominator is our total sum of squares, the total variability. We know that there are only two sources of variability, right? So we have total sum of squares equals the regression sum of squares plus the error sum of squares. So if we just divide both sides by the total sum of squares, Then we see that the left-hand side is equal to 1, and then the right-hand side is regression sum of squares over total sum of squares plus error sum of squares over total sum of squares. Now let's move this term over to the other side. So then we end up with regression sum of squares over total sum of squares is equal to 1 minus the error sum of squares over the total sum of squares. So another way, in other words, that we can calculate R squared is we can calculate one minus the error sum of squares over the total sum of squares. So this is how we still calculate R squared 
it's still going to be defined the same way as in simple linear regression. It's still the total sum, uh, it's still the um, regression sum of squares over the total sum of squares. Or in other words, it's still one minus the error sum of squares over the total sum of squares. Now, R squared is um, a really simple way to see like how much variability our model is explaining. But the problem is that when you add more and more predictors into the model, it only makes R squared stay the same or get better. So even if you throw in the most irrelevant predictor, then worst case scenario, R squared will stay exactly the same. It will never decrease. Um, so R squared isn't really great for multiple linear regression. We, it's useful to look at something called adjusted R squared. So the adjusted part is taking into account how many predictors you have in the model. Okay, so our adjusted sum of squares is equal to one minus, we're going to take this and just tweak it a bit. We'll have error sum of squares and then divide it by n minus k minus one, which is the degrees of freedom for the um, error in the ANOVA table. And then in the denominator, we'll have the total sum of squares still. And now we'll divide that by the total degrees of freedom n minus one. Okay, so this is our adjusted R squared. It's one minus error sum of squares over n minus k minus one divided by total sum of squares over n minus one. So for this, if you throw in a totally useless predictor, then this will actually make your adjusted R squared decrease to penalize you for throwing in a very silly irrelevant predictor. So now with adjusted R squared, the basic idea hopefully is that when you add a useful predictor, adjusted R squared increases. And when you incorporate a very silly useless predictor, then R adjusted R squared will decrease. Okay, so that's our adjusted R squared. One thing to notice is that this is the same thing as one minus the mean squared error divided by this, the variance of the y's. Okay, now let's talk about the ANOVA table. So remember from before that in our ANOVA table, we are organizing information about our sum of squares and our degrees of freedom. And then we can put those together into our mean squares. Okay, so we have two sources of variability. We have the regression. And then we have the error. And then put those together for total. So the sum of squares for the regression is the sum from i equals 1 to n of y i hat minus y bar squared. The sum of squares for the error is the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus yi hat squared. And then the total sum of squares is the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus y bar squared. So those are our three types of sum of squares. And then we can go into the degrees of freedom for each of these sources. So for the regression, the degrees of freedom is k because the number of betas, so remember beta is uh, k plus one vector. So this is the length of beta minus one. Then for our error, we have n minus k minus one, or you can write this n minus parentheses k plus one, whatever makes it more clear for you. And then degrees of freedom for the total is n minus one.
So we can see if we add these up, if we add up the degrees of freedom for the regression and for the error. We end up with n minus one degrees of freedom, which is the total degrees of freedom. Okay, then finally we can get to the mean squares. So the mean square for the regression is the sum of squares for the regression divided by its degrees of freedom. And for mean squared error, we take our sum of squares for the error divided by the degrees of freedom for the error. Okay, so those are our two mean squares. Okay, so that is as much of the ANOVA, ANOVA table as we'll get into for now. In a bit, we will see that there is more to the ANOVA table over here, but we'll get there not today.